Check, check, test one, two, one, two, three. Check, 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 one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Test, 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 test. Check, 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 three. Test, 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 test. Check, one, two, three, A, B, C, D, E. One, two, three, check, 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 check. Okay.
Good afternoon. Uh, first and foremost, we want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone here that has taken time out of your busy schedules to attend our press conference. We would also like to send a big thanks to Paul Byrne with BBVA and his staff for allowing us to put this together on such short notice. We would also like to thank all of our media members here in attendance, and we'd also like to thank you, all of our fans and supporters that have came here to support the program. Also, a big shout out to our viewers who are watching the event right now live on YouTube. Just a quick few announcements. Today, the Tigers football program has released their 2016 schedule. We actually have some copies of these, if anyone would like one as you leave out. Uh, just a few quick key dates. Uh, the home opener will be September 17th. That'll be against Mississippi Valley State. That'll be right here at BBVA Compass Stadium. Homecoming, October 22nd, Tigers will host Jackson State. And the senior day, last home game of the season, will be November 19th. That game will be against Grambling State. Just for all of us to get a rundown of the order of the program today, we will start things off with opening remarks by Texas Southern President Dr. John Rudley. Following him, the next voice that you will hear will be Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics, Dr. Charles McClellan. And then we will have opening remarks from our new coach, Following coaches' open remarks, the floor will be open for Q&As. And after the event is wrapped up, any media seeking one-on-one -on -one opportunities will be able to do so right here on the side of the stage. With that, we'll begin things with opening remarks from Texas Southern President, Dr. John Rudley. Mike Haywood. Yes, sir. That's a real catch for us, as you all know especially since I like the idea that he's a Houstonian. Let's just give a round of applause for the fact he's from Houston. <laughs> and uh, Charles came to me uh, about three or four months ago, and uh, he has a strategic plan for our program. It has always started with a great facility. It took us quite a bit of time to get this great facility uh, when we first got an opportunity to play our football games here. We still had a lot of criticism from people because we wanted to take the program to the next level. Uh, some people wanted the program to remain where it was, and that is playing our football games on campus or playing it in the high school stadiums. That was not the vision that Charles has for this program. It has never been our vision. We want our program to be a first class uh, football program. And I think as we continue down the road, Charles has just done a wonderful job of improving all of our athletic programs. As you know, we won uh, the Commissioner's Cup. We had six championships this year in other, other sports. Uh, but I want to say now the other piece of the puzzle is, of course, football. Texas is all about football. Can you imagine that? What about basketball? You know, <laughs> I played basketball in college. How about basketball? Mike Davis done a good job. But I think this, this piece that has come together, we're all excited about it. And so w without even, even you know, prolonging this, this introduction, just know this is a very happy president. I'm sure that our alumni and our students are very optimistic about where we're going to go with the football program. And so I want to welcome uh, Mike Haywood to our Texas Southern University home. And I also want to congratulate you, Dr. Charles McClellan for all his efforts at bringing all of our programs up to par. And we know football is going to be the next great uh, effort on his part. Thank you all. And let's go Tigers. New Tigers. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all of you uh, for coming out. I would like to thank Paul and everybody on the team here at BBVA for allowing us to get this together so quickly. And as I get older, I always have to follow protocol, so I would be remiss if I did not say hello to my father on the World Wide Web watching in Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> hello, Dad. I promise you I was going to say hello. Uh, before I uh, get started about Coach Haywood, I would like to say a couple of words about our former football coach, Coach Asbury, a person that I admire and have the utmost respect for. When he took over our football program approximately four and a half years ago, uh, we were pretty down. Uh, and Coach Asbury worked diligently. Uh, we have one of the best APRs amongst uh, Division I football teams here in the state of Texas and in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Our graduation rate for our football players is remarkable. Uh, matter of fact, it's impeccable. Uh, he led us into this stadium, and he led us out of the NCAA sanctions that we were facing. So he did not meet the last goal and objective that he set for himself. 
uh, but 99% of the other duties that we assigned to him, he did and did it with grace and class, and I will forever be indebted to Coach Ashbury. So I felt like I needed to say that publicly as it related to Coach Ashbury. But we do have to turn the page, uh, and we wanted to turn the page relatively quickly. I uh, had opportunity to meet with the student athletes once they got noticed that Coach Asbury would not be returning, and they gave me some uh, criteria, uh, Coach Haywood, uh, and you would be pleased to know that you fit all three of the criteria uh, that they gave me. But one of the last criteria that they talked about was that they wanted to be champions. And you need to bring somebody in that's going to lead us to be champions. Uh, Dr. Rowley talked about this stadium, uh, truly remarkable for Texas Southern University. The ability for us to have the root sports deal so people can see our product. Being able to get quality student athletes in, now uh, we have the coach that's going to be able to take us to that next level, in my opinion. Uh, Michael Haywood coaching credentials, they are impeccable. You can't match those against any Division I uh, college coach in the country. Uh, the question that I've been getting most is, how did you get Michael Haywood? Well, I told uh, my basketball coach, Mike Davis, and I know Mike Davis is looking, you're not the only show in town anymore, Mike. <coughs> you're going to have to step up, and you're going to have to come on with it because football is uh, going to push you as well. As Dr. Rudley stated, uh, we had um, of our 16 programs, only two of those programs, football and soccer, did not finish in the top four. Uh, we won six different championships last year, and we had five other teams that finished second. So football really is that last piece of that puzzle, and we're going to turn the keys over to Coach Haywood so he can do the remarkable job that we know uh, that he can do. So the question to me was, how excited are you? Uh, I'm so excited that I'm going to take next week off and the week after, <laughs> and the week after that, Dr. Rutherford. You, you worked me pretty good here the last. We wanted this thing to be quick. We wanted it to be decisive. And we wanted people to know that Texas Southern is all about doing the things that it takes in order for us to get to that championship level the right way. And the only way that I know to do it is to hire the best person that's available to lead our program to a champion. And that is Coach Mike Haywood. So with that, I ask Dr. Rutley to come up. And we're going to introduce you to your next head football coach at Texas Southern University, Coach Michael Haywood. nice schedule to start off with. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Charles McClendon for the opportunity. Uh, when I moved back to Houston five years ago, I had the opportunity to meet him and develop a relationship from one of my former players at Miami of Ohio. I'd like to thank President John Rutley for the opportunity to be here as his head football coach. I'd like to thank the board members because with their decision along with the President and Charles, it's a great opportunity for offering me a wonderful job, and I thank you. I would be the type of head coach you would like to call your head coach. I would be the type of head coach that the student athletes would like to say, that's my coach. I wanted to make sure that we take Texas Southern University to the next level that when we line up and play, people look at us as the front door to a magnificent university. And we send a message across the country. I'd like to thank my family. My mother and father couldn't be here. They're running late because my mother had to go to the doctor. But I'd like to thank my family that are all sitting up here in front. And all of my friends that are out here in the audience and people that I've known the majority of my life Thank you for being here today. Thank you for walking with me on this pathway. It has been a journey. As your head coach, I look forward to meeting with our team. As we meet with our team, we're going to let them know how much we appreciate them and how much we look forward to meeting them. We're going to let them know what we expect from them and what they can expect for us. Because it's about trust and commitment and dedication to the program and it's about one heartbeat. Because as we work as individuals and we work as a separate heartbeat, there's not much success. But when we work together as one, 
we will be successful and be champions. I want all the players to know how exciting the program is going to be. We're going to have each individual understand their role. Because the worst thing that you can do within the organization is not understand your responsibility and obligation to this team. And each person is going to understand their obligation and responsibility as we move forward. I look, to, I look forward to putting a coaching staff together. When I talked to Mac Brown last night about some of the coaches we were going to hire, he was a little stunned. But we're going to have one of the greatest coaching staffs that we can put together. Our coaches will be mentors. They will be coaches. They will help recruit, and they will recruit across the state of Texas, the city of Houston. I look forward to putting together a program that is equally grounded and with four anchors, academic excellence. We look forward to working with the student body. We look forward to working with the academic professors, the students and faculty, and making sure that our student athletes graduate in four years. Team culture. <laughs> Integrity. Character. Discipline. Honor. And professionalism at all times. We're going to be mentally and physically disciplined. We're going to make sure that we're the best conditioned football team in the country. Not in the swag, but in the country. Right. Exciting and winning football for our fans and our student environment so that they look forward to coming into our stadium on Saturday to watch us play. I look forward to building relationships with TSU alums. I've been fortunate because my mother attended Texas Southern University. One of my mentors, Mr. Morris Baptiste, played basketball at Texas Southern University and graduated. Grew up around the corner from assistant basketball coach, Mr. Robert Gatlin. And so Texas Southern, when I was in the fourth grade, Doc Harvey used to treat me from fourth grade to eighth grade. <laughs> and a lot of people say that's a long time ago. <laughs> We're gonna be recruiting across the state, meeting recruits and their families. I look forward to talking about Texas Southern University and its brand, spreading all the good news across the city of Houston and the state of Texas. Most importantly, I want to thank Texas Southern University for the opportunity to be your head coach and to bring a winning football team to Texas Southern University and the city of Houston. Thank you very much. Right, with that being said, the floor is now open for questions. We ask that if you have a question that you please raise your hand so that we can get a microphone over to you. Thank you. Michael, one of your former players, Brandon Brooks, over at the Texans. Yes, sir. said that uh, you're a hard-nosed coach. You will always tell it like it is. I'm going to ask you a couple different things, but what, what, what does that mean to you when he says that? Brandon Brooks is probably one of the most talented athletes that I've ever coached. And my director of football operations from Miami, you can see her laughing because she knows where I'm going. Uh, Brandon Brooks, being the most talented football player on the team, I set him on the bench for about two to three weeks. And I set him on the bench because Brandon thought that he could practice, he didn't have to practice, but he could play. And so he enjoyed coming to practice, working out with the trainer and the uh, weight room staff on a regular basis. And then he would come up and stand on the side of me doing practice. And I think he missed two or three games. But however, we played extremely well and the next man up was extremely successful. When he came back, he ended up being a second round draft pick. He also said that um, you're not a cookie-cutter coach. 
the same approach with each player. You take each player and handle them differently. What does that mean? Well, I think everybody's raised differently. Everybody comes from a different environment. No one's the same. When you look around this room, we have a culturally diverse group here today. And I think that you have to treat each individual fair, but you can treat them differently. You know? And make sure that you're always honest. And I think that's what a lot of times you have to make sure the kids understand. They may not appreciate what you're telling them, but they're thankful that you're honest with them. And I've always been honest with all my players. Mac Brown said last night that you missed coaching so much. How special is this moment for you? Oh, I think it's unbelievable. An opportunity to be at home, an opportunity to coach at Texas Southern University, in which I've known since I was a child, and to see a lot of family and friends on a regular basis that have come here to support me today. I am extremely grateful and thankful. I would just like to know uh, what formations you'll be running and will you uh, recruit in other, any states other than Texas? Well, first of all, there'll be multiple formations. Um, we're going to run New England's offense. When I was the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame, we ran New England's offense. New England's offense is Texas offense because they came after Charlie Weiss left, and Charlie Weiss is the founder of that offense. And so when you talk about formations, you may see 20 different formations, 25 different formations in a game. But that really doesn't, that isn't really complex to an offense. It is complex to a defense because offensively, you will run the same plays that you're running in one formation out of the other. But it just makes it extremely complex for the defense to get lined up. Coach Haywood, I don't have a question for you, but uh, one second, Marquise. Recruiting, we're definitely going to recruit the entire state of Texas, and I got a call from some high school coaches over in Louisiana today that have some players for me to come over and look at it, and I'm going to go over there and look at some players over in Louisiana. I spent, uh, I think, ten to twelve years recruiting the state of Louisiana. Yes, Marquise. Coach, I don't have a question for you, but I just wanted to. When I heard that you were getting the head coaching job here and I called you yesterday and I played for you at LSU first year, I remember going through the same process with you. You know, before we got to LSU, they had lost six, seven straight years, you know, and, and, and Coach Hayward was the best recruit on that staff. He convinced myself, Kevin Falk, Rundell Mealy, all those guys to come to LSU and, 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 you know, and he was always one of the best coaches on the staff. He was always tough, but he was fair, you know, and, um, and when you're coaching those kind of guys, you can't you can't have favoritism. You know, when you have a Kevin Falk and you have a Rundell, you have a Cecil Collins, you know, you always have to be fair with those guys. And uh, I just want to let you guys know you're getting a hell of a coach, and he'll he definitely turn it around. So happy for you, coach, and uh, good luck, baby. Thank you, Mark. Thank Uh, first of all, congratulations. Welcome back. Uh, two you. questions for you. First, one of the challenges local schools have often had is recruiting Houston talent and getting them to stay. I know you've recruited Houston forever, but how do you plan to address getting kids that play here in town to stay in town? One of the things is about relationships and what you have. And as we stated, as, as it was stated by, the, uh, by Charles previously, is that they didn't have Houston-grown talent are Houston grown coaches and I was born and raised here and I recruited here for over 24 years so it's about relationships that you develop you know it's about relationships that not only you develop with the high school coaches but it's relationships that you developed over the years with the aunts the uncles the cousins the nieces the nephews you know you've coached their aunts and uncles 20 years ago and now they say hey he's supposed to come he needs to come to you, Coach. He needs to come to a certain type of man, and you're the right type of man for him to come to. At the second time, it's also about identifying the appropriate talent, all right, and understanding the appropriate talent. There were guys that I sent to Texas Southern last year that people in Friendswood and Clear Lake were calling me about, hey, we need you to help us getting our young, getting our young student athletes placed. And I helped place some of their student athletes in the SWAC conference last year. So over the last four or five years, I've been called by different coaches and different parents to help place their children. 
Can you talk about the two coaches or the coaches or the if there's just one that have had the most impact on you in your career? I know you work with some amazing coaches. Well, I think the first one is Nick Saban. Uh, Nick Saban is a guy that manages the entire program. And when I say manages the entire program, he understands what the janitor is doing, what the trainer is doing, what the field people are doing, all the way up to the assistant head coach, the offense coordinator, defense coordinator. So he basically manages the entire program from the day he walks into that building to the day he leaves. Um, Matt Brown is probably the best politician I've ever met in this world. He should run for governor. He is unbelievable in the way that he handles the media and the alumni, along with handling the coaches and making sure that the coaches are doing everything appropriately. I remember he walked into a room and said, hey, Vince Young's going to be your starting quarterback. Greg Davis looked at him and like, are you kidding me? He said, no, he's going to be your starting quarterback. So within an hour, we had changed the entire offense. And we went out, rushed for 320-some yards, 330-some yards, and we ended up winning the game by 30-some points. He understands how to push the right buttons. Charlie Weiss is probably the best offensive mind that I've ever been around. I mean, my first year, we lined up in an unbalanced set with the tight end over to the nub side, and he says, all right, go ahead on and hit your head on the goal post. It's touchdown. Fazano runs down the field. Brady Quinn hits him on a touchdown pass over the middle. Touchdown. I didn't see it. However, I learned to see it because he taught me more about pass protection and throwing the football than anybody that I've ever been around. And a gentleman by the name of Morris Watts, who was with George Perlis, if you ever want to learn how to run the football, you go see Morris Watts. And those guys were probably the most instrumental guys in my career. Any more questions? I just have one last question. Um, a gentleman asked you about formation, and you talked about what well, the Patriots run and the Texans run. You and I talked about this. That's an offense that is supposedly so complicated. So um, why bring something so complicated? Or is it like you said, it doesn't have to be as complicated as it's been made out to be? It is not as, it's only as complicated as you make it. I think people have to understand and players have to understand in the teaching philosophy. For example, if you're a wide receiver, everything is, everything is designed by being number one, number two, and number three, and number four. And it's, everything is conceptual. So it's one-man concepts, two-man concepts, three-man concepts, four-man concepts. So if you line up at number two, you know exactly what you're supposed to do. You line up at number three, you know exactly what you're supposed to do. And it's extremely easy to learn. Because once you get into position, you're out here as the number one wide receiver with a certain concept, you're basically told what to do. Uh, when it gets into the, into the run game, you run the same run plays over and over and over again versus different fronts. So that when you get into a game and we come over and we make what we call midstream adjustments by changing the blocking scheme, everybody's on the same plate, everybody's on the same page. And uh, it can be complex by formations. But verbiage, you know, it really isn't that complex. And you look at it this way. When the Texans played two weeks ago, they brought a quarterback off the street. Was it T.J. Yakes? They brought T.J. Yakes in off the street. He got the offense in one week, and they won the football game. So how complicated is that? Yeah? And my father just walked in the room. Any more questions? Yes, ma'am, I understand that. <laughs> I, I understand that. <laughs> I, I look forward to being there as well. We have any more questions? Um, I have a lot of trouble out of PV. You, you think you'll be able to line us up for the, in time for, for, to beat them this coming year? I will say this to you. We will always approach one game at a time, right? And as I look at this schedule, 
PV is the first game on the schedule. Our goal is to be the best team on the field that day. Not concerned about anybody else, but PV. And if we're the best team on the field and the most physical team on the field, you'll see their coach hang up a white flag <laughs> because that is what our goal is. My aunt is a Jackson State graduate. I am so sick of her texting me, where is the band? Asbury is uh, her husband's best buddy. So throughout the whole game, she's texting me the score. Where's the band? And of course, we lost at the end, so maybe we can fix this next year. But I know it's financial. We have got to get the band and the alarm and have a caravan to Jackson State just for my aunt. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, we're going to get things to get set to wrap things up here. Uh, just a few quick notes. Um, you can follow and catch all of the latest breaking news regarding the Texas Southern Tigers football program as well as new head football coach Michael Haywood by going to our official website. That's www.tsusports.com. You can also follow us via our social media avenues at TXSO Tigers for Instagram and Twitter as well as for YouTube. Once again, in closing, we'll be available for one-on-ones right after we have a few photo opportunities here on stage. Once again, thank you to all of our viewers on YouTube and for all of you who took time out your day to be here with us. Thank you. Thank you.